I'm Matthias. Um, I'm working also on the on the DDK um, for the Android Systems team in London. Uh, I might as well stay, steal your one minute. So the, the, debuggabil the debuggability issue, like these long parts and everything, uh, confusing error messages is actively something we are working on with the Basel team. Um, it's surprisingly non-trivial <laughs> to get this um, at the same time the interactive output of Basel, and on the other hand side, like a, a consistent stripping of irrelevant information. Um, it's surprisingly hard, um, but we're working on it to, to, to make this actually better. It's, it's also something that is uh, frequently brought up uh, as well. Um, okay, so this is kind of the continuation of, um, uh, of John's talk. Um, basically, what, what he just showed you, this is just a, an, an enriched version with a little bit of more code. Uh, okay. Uh, um, <laughs> Yeah, did you hear me in the beginning at all? <laughs> I'm I'm sorry. Ah, okay. Um, so this this is just a sample module, um, which which is um, not using any particularly interesting features, but you see dependencies, um, you see um, simple exports, um, using them, uh, and how modules can depend on each other uh, with the DDK. So that's all not new. Um, what like as a recap, when you're using this, um, you're inheriting all the the, the, the thematic, thematic tool chain from the from the base build, compilers, linkers, everything. Um, the the whole uh, boilerplate for like the whole make file and and everything is um, generated because we are still using KBuild under the hood. Um, but the whole dependency resolution orchestration um, goes to Basel. Um, so the question is like, what is new? And so that's what we were working on in 15. So things might change a bit, but um, the general idea is um, we want to make it as, as simple as, you know, you have an empty directory and in five minutes you get a, a flashable kernel module um, built against, a, let's say, a signed um, a Google signed uh, GKI kernel image. Um, in practice, it might, might not look exactly like that because it's just not practical. Um, that's not how you probably want to do it because of um, corporate boundaries or like how you acquire or like your download speed doesn't doesn't um, allow for that kind of five minutes pre-built download. Um, but, but the general idea is um, we build against pre-built signed images. They might be in a CI system, they might be on your disk, um, they might be hosted in your corporate network or wherever it is. Um, and you refer to them as there they are. And uh, everything else comes like batteries included. It comes with um, all the compiler tool chain and like, all the goodies that you get, except you don't build the kernel actually, you just build the module and you, you just focus on the modules um, and you refer to them um, just as a, as a repository. We are using again, uh, basal features to make this work under the hood um, that you actually just have to specify a single line. Um, so, uh, Light is not working. Yeah. So, for example, you could specify a cleave repository on the left side, just like a, like for example, build number that we use in ciandro.com. It could be a build number that you use in your own um, CI system. Um, it could be uh, a, a pre build that is resolved by using, for example, our release branches. Um, so, we have like this, this particular case is not actually a branch, but the release tag like Android 15.6.1, 2024, the January build, release number one. Um, you would just like point at it and um, the whole magic under the hood would download the right tool chain and, um, uh, and, you, and you could build your, your modules against. Um, the, you could also have like moving targets, like slowly moving release branches or development branches, or even have Android mainline as a, as a moving target where you build against without actually changing your um, DD, uh, your particular vendor specific build files or your, your code, except across major kernel versions, um, it's more than likely that your code might break um, because it's just like, that's not a guarantee that the kernel gives that, that, that the, the API is um, compatible. And, but upgrading within the LTS could just be like, um, changing a string, you know, it could be from uh, Android 14.6.1 to Android 15.6.1, uh, 
could just be a, a single string you change or you make configurable uh, and suddenly you have you know like uh, a, a module that builds against the one kernel or the other um, or it could be Android 15.6.1 to Android 15.6.6 which is kind of an, an LTS upgrade within Android 15 um, or to the next release branch whatever is working for your workflow um, under the, uh, like you don't need to you don't need to change your build files you don't see any of these times uh, build file changes except for where you get your pre-build from and we are, we are thinking about how, how to because sometimes things break so we need to depend on on some things it's just like really really hacky um we, we could probably have defines provide or something um that that makes it make transitions easier um, between major kernel versions or between android 15 and 14 where features are available but the main the main idea here remains that um upgrades between kernels between lts or even um upgrading from the latest lts to mainline should be as simple as um, um upgrading the reference that you're uh, that you're using for uh and as you can see on the on the um, bottom left this is basically an, an up ref uh, that's a, you're upgrading your your driver from 6.1 to 6.6 um and technically get one year longer support for uh from from lts for that for that driver and uh, and that's what we're actually doing it for uh we want people to upgrade and eventually also um to upstream so what happens under the hood is not like we are, we are caging in uh and saying okay you you're locked in with ddk forever no, the make files that are generated under the hood, you can literally take, and they're as upstream friendly as we can get them, including license headers and commons and dependency specification in a way that is friendly for upstreaming. So um, upgrading might not need uh, actually changing a string. It might be just like making the module disappearing because, uh, because it's um, already upstream. Um, so like on, on the one hand side, yes, we want, uh, we want people to use DDK. On the other hand side, a world without DDK would be a very nice upstream uh, way of uh, resolving the same problem. Um, yeah, does anybody have any questions? So the way this works under the hood is like let's let's put the sources to the second step, but it resolves automatically. The way that this works, it basically creates uh, shadow copies of um, of each of those versions. For example, if Android 15.6.1 and F Android 15.6.6 share a common compiler, they are stored at the um, at the local um, uh, at local cache at the same uh, space. Um, but if you refer to them, if you actually build. Um, uh, the, the cleave repository rule creates kind of a shadow tree that looks like your current checkout, but out of all these these pre-builds and like uh, it's manufactured together. And similarly, you can opt in to actually build from sources. And similarly, it would create these these the same trees as shadow copies and also make them available. Um, we don't have to necessarily exactly pan out how editing this particular like how you would map it into the source tree because. The idea of uh, of the or like the, this this uh, very pure idea of having nothing in your source tree than the DDK module itself um, kind of collides with having sources in the tree, um, but um, obviously this will, will need to be um, available as well. But we don't have necessarily the interface figured out how to swap sources in or how to make them available, especially in the presence of multi-branch. Um, uh, system so that that's that's kind of work in progress but we are going towards that um it should be easy to to switch but it should remain uh simple to debug obviously and to, to work on your own sources and to obviously to upstream because you can move it into that tree right when you upstream Uh, references 
So we, we had an alternative interface that it's not off the table, but it's something that wasn't too popular when we when we uh, asked around. Um, it's basically to specify um, this, what, what is defin uh, defined here as a variable, as an array of having multiple options at the same time. For example, uh, 1461 and 1561 at, and mainline at the same time. And once your build kicks off, you build against all three at the same time. You download all the pre-builds, you know, at everything at the same time. Um, but again, you would you would only build against pre-built kernel binaries, um, having the like uh, three source trees available in in the source tree for you to see, um, is still different from having pre-built something tucked away in in, in your cache directory, then and you will no, never look at it. So like it's something we we need to solve and eventually will solve. But but this is good feedback. Yeah. I, I know what you're saying, but eventually you will upstream against exactly one version where you can take them all off. And in the latest version, you should be able to take them all off, right? Um, just like the latest that you upstream gets mainline should be without any if defs. And, and don't nail, nail me down on the exact syntax. That's um, that's really work in progress. Uh, and just as to illustrate uh, what kind of things we can do, it might probably look some more a bit more elegant than this. <laughs> Okay, any further questions? Uh, you mean sources versus uh, yeah. pre -builds? It will it will be a, a conditional. Like under the hood, um, we will have a basal select basal conditional, mm -hmm. uh, and how it's exactly configured via flag, via config, whether um, like you literally specify it in the sources. Um, like you're not yet sure, uh, but for sure something like where you can dynamically switch like dash dash build mm -hmm. against sources. Um, should be, like, it's fairly easy to implement. So. Okay. And it would produce some kind of output archive that then this thing can download. Say again? It, it, it would then produce some output arch archive that this tool could download as a pre-built. I, I guess so, I'm not sure what that looks like. So the, the pre-builds that, that we produce on ciento.com uh, are basically just the output of the, the basal build, right? So oh. um, any anything that you can produce with the, with the, with the cleave build today, Will be suitable as a DDK. Um, as as for now, to make this kind of demo or this kind of POC work, but you, what you see here on the slides, we have a patch uh, like a stack of 15, 15 patches or something in AOSP that transform a uh, a pre-built into a suitable uh, pre-built for this case. And once this all lands, literally every every um, kernel build output like distribution mm -hmm. is suitable to be taken into account as as DDK. So there's not particularly um, DDK dist or something, or at least we don't plan to. It's mm -hmm. just part of the normal kernel distribution. Okay. It packs up all the things that you need. Yeah. Makes sense. Or at least can refer to it, you know, if yeah. like metadata referring to something else to download somewhere else. Yeah. yeah. It will be at least complete. Yeah. Okay. Any literally last minute question? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, thanks a lot. Yeah.